So a lot of issues clearly on the on the media and analytics side, and it's always surprising to me that um, you know, most of these conferences I come to, there's 80% of the conversation about the medium, not the message. Um, because we're automating a lot very fast, MarTech is moving very quickly, and I can tell you as a as an employee of Sapien Corporation, MarTech is gonna play a much larger role in all of your lives um, in the next three to five years as the infrastructure for um, delivering addressability at scale uh, moves upon us. I think that, you know, from my perspective, it's always, um, if I can get to, there we go. Um, you know, this is clearly a, uh, in addition to um, the, all of the things that Harvey mentioned are important to adapt to uh, from a media and analytics standpoint. Creative messaging, or what we would call advertising messaging, is in a great state of transition right now. Um, and you know, just coming off of CES, if you were to see how many new screen platforms there are going to be, um, including headphones, watches, things that are not only gonna be tremendously difficult to measure, but as we think about the notion of creating once and deploying everywhere, it's gonna put huge new onus on how we organize for creative messaging. And I think a lot of what we've ignored and a lot of what marketers have to deal with, uh, for those of you in the room who are on that side, I don't think the language gap and the ta things we're trying to tackle between agency and marketer are the problem. The issue is we have a language gap between our CMOs and the rest of the C-suite. And if we do our jobs well, because there's some very smart people in this room, as I said before, if we do our jobs well, the language with which we choose to focus on, the two or three things you can focus on, be they on the media side or be they on the content side, depending on you know, how deep the swim lanes are within your own organizations, is where to try to get focus. Because Harvey just presented us eight um, and I'm gonna present you some more. My advice would be pick the two or three that you can affect and that you can relentlessly focus on. So this isn't just a communications and content issue for us now, it is also an experience issue. And when you say the word experience to a CFO or a CAOO, they just glaze over. So that's what I mean by the language barrier we've gotta get beyond. I recently heard Steve Ireland, the head of global digital marketing for Chase, uh, JP Morgan Chase, say that 75% of all their customer interactions are now digital. And that does not include ATM transactions. That means communications isn't what's primary for them. It's user experience and experiences they're building in the mobile platform that if something takes more than three or four clicks, it's gotta go in the garbage can. And that's the difference from a, when we think about creative and content, we're not just thinking about communications, we're thinking about content and experience, and by the way, e-commerce. If we're only focused on the notion of push messaging, um, one way, no matter, regardless of programmatic media, non-programmatic media, whatever it is, we're still story yelling. And one of the things we're gonna talk about for over the next two days is different models of not story yelling and getting into some content that's gonna hopefully stretch your mind and talk about how those folks that are pursuing this kind of content are selling it not only to the CMO, but how are they selling it to the rest of the C-suite? And what are, they, what are they doing to do that, right? Um, I think that the first thing we need to adapt to if we think about the, the theme of the next couple of days is the way that we tell brand stories is gonna change. Because of the interruptive model, because we know we have to change it. And in an always on world where the consumer can turn us on or off at will across the number of screens I just mentioned on the heels of CES, um, it's gonna be necessary that we move from a campaign-based mindset to an always on content-based mindset. And some people call that content marketing. At Sapient Nitro, we call that storyscaping. Um, but it's about creating worlds, not just ads. And that's a little bit different approach to the notion of where we've been before, which is going beyond what percentage of your spend is going to mass reach, what percentage of your spend is going to targeted audience, and very soon, coming, you know, coming to a media plan very soon near you, how much of your spend is gonna be at one-to-one? -one? Because we've already seen context, context, which is a word I'm gonna just continue to drill on, 
because the Facebooks and the Googles are already delivering context in a way that's making us as the message makers change the way we create ads. Because if we have to deliver creative addressability at scale without automation, we can do it through automation, but the question is, will anybody feel anything? And how do we get to that point where we can get to one-to-one -one at scale? So that means we've got to sort of adapt our thinking from a campaign-based mindset to an always-on content, and as I said before, building experience is not just communications-based mindset. And if we're really good, we've got mobile platforms and devices out there on our wrists or whatever they are that are actually platforms of interaction that have people making our brands a part of who they are every day. So this progression from being purely communications oriented to being content oriented to being platform oriented is the world that we're facing. And we're gonna have to adapt to that. If I would be remiss if I, if I didn't cover the piece of this that is very near and dear to me as a sapient person, which is that the worlds of the CMO and CIO are colliding. And if you weren't aware of that now, uh, those, in, uh, those of you in the room, I know there are several of you who are immersed in this, but when I came to Sapient Nitro as chief creative officer three years ago, I can tell you that my knowledge of the marketing tech stack was about this much. And today, three years later, having immersed myself in some very major e-commerce builds, CMS deployments, everything, you know, hooking up ECRM with front doors, this is gonna be a huge part of what you need to know. Even if you're selling media, an appreciation for this collision that's happening is something we're gonna to need to adapt to. It's gonna mean you're gonna to need to learn new languages like I did. And it's a very important part. DevOps, tech ops, ad ops is only the tip of the iceberg for what's coming down the stream. From a pure messaging standpoint, the challenge for creative directors and those I work with is automation is starting to affect everything that we do. But the question is, are we gonna rely on applied analytics to drive the creative one-to-one? -one? Are we gonna rely on the data and the automation to write the creative one-to-one? -one? Are we gonna rely on the software and SaaS platforms to produce the creative one-to-one -one just because we can? And are we gonna actually serve that creative one-to-one, -one, which we know we can do already and are doing from a programmatic standpoint? And because we can measure every nanosecond of what happens in digital, does that mean we should? Is it really something that in the weeds is gonna be valuable to CMOs as they carry the conversation forward to the rest of the C-suite? This is something that we as the message makers are adapting to. So far, what we call data-driven creative doesn't look so good. And I don't know that those of you in the room would disagree with me, but I would say that you know, keeping talent in a creative department, like I have to, from the standpoint of you know, getting kids to get out of bed who like to make stuff, what we're showing them good looks like from a data-driven standpoint in terms of dynamically serving headlines that are informed by an algorithm and populating a container, a container isn't really moving anybody emotionally. And the numbers we're seeing aren't really moving anybody. So we might have the right programmatic formulas, we might have the right technology. The technology is ready, but we're not thinking enough about context. We're not mixing up contexts. And from a creative messaging standpoint, we're in a huge transition and we have a long way to go. So our question is, as we think about content moving forward, is automating that process really gonna move anybody or are we just gonna get to scale? Because creative is based on skill, content's based on skill, not on scale. And the question is, are those two things so antithetical that we can't bring the art and science of what we do together? Right? And what is good gonna look like in that category? Recently, for those of you familiar with Art Basel, we represent Ferrari of North America. And we decided to take the data coming from the tire tracks of Ferrari test drives that people took at Art Basel, because we know very few people can afford the car, but to introduce the new automobile, 
we actually implanted sensors in the tires. We took the data from the test drives and we turned it into personal pieces of art that each person who drove the car could take home with them. Posters that were purely data-driven creative executions. Data that informs and data that enables as opposed to data being the idea is what we need to get to. Now this isn't gonna happen at scale yet, but our challenge is how are we gonna do that from a content standpoint? So when Harvey and I talked, as I mentioned a minute ago, we decided to focus on a few key areas. Over the next two days, how should we adapt and expand the way we tell our brand stories to an always-on consumer, right? We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about moving from campaign-based mindset to brand content to commerce to the promise of what I just said, which is true one-to-one -one creative messaging at scale or personalized creative at scale. We're gonna talk about how to adapt to this need from not just communications, but building digital experiences, apps, and platforms that go beyond pure communications. And that may not affect a lot of you in this room, but if you're on the marketer side, I'm certain it's going to affect you. And then lastly, what new kinds of language do you need to know in storytelling, in applied analytics from Harvey's world, and content marketing as we think about this new thing called always on content? What do we need to do to arm CMOs with the kind of knowledge they need to get to the C-suite and get the C-suite to understand? So with that, I'd simply close by saying lots to talk about. We tried to bring it down to like six things. We're gonna try to keep that focus, but I, I hope as a, as a kickoff this was valuable and we look forward to the next two days. Thanks very much.